working hard to achieve four goals at the same time. The first is to make the very best biochar. The second is to use as much of the process energy as possible. The third is to eliminate as many emissions as possible. And the fourth is to make the whole process as profitable as possible for everyone. No matter what biomass we put in, we get out carbon. This is how we really mean to take a bite out of our carbon footprint. Good stuff. We've got a, a pretty sophisticated manifold system that um, senses heat at each one of these units outside. If that heat is hotter than the tanks inside, then we can start a pump and actually start drawing heat off of these, putting them into a large tank or directly into the manifold that then distributes it out to various loads throughout the facility. We've got uh, tubing inside the soil, like actually in the ground, about 12 inches below the surface in these greenhouses. We've got tubing below your feet outside here. Uh, we've got tubing in each one of these rooms and tubing in the concrete slab in the kilns. And we have high temperature loads like uh, the fans that Abraham described inside the kilns. Uh, we're gonna be working on fans inside the greenhouse later this summer too for next winter's heating. A lot of future projects in mind here. We're gonna be doing some small scale alcohol production out here which we'll be able to use heat from the system for that process. And uh, a system that we've just recently installed but haven't put online yet is uh, heating tables for starts. Those are also in the greenhouse using low temperature water. So once heat gets from this point to that point, we can siphon off uh, low temperature for all of our high mass heating, like the slab, and then high temperature water for uh, the fans and low mass heating units. How yes. many gallons are in those tanks? Uh, two 10,000 gallon tanks in there. So it, basically everything behind this wall is a water storage. Uh, massive tanks. What's that? Did you build the building around? We did. We did, yeah. You can't get them out. <laughs> they are not coming out. Yeah, they are nice salvaged uh, stainless steel tanks. You know, one interesting thing about this system, because it's a batch system, we, we tend to kind of, we don't have a flat line, uh, stable amount of heat that it comes in and goes out. We have, basically have to absorb these huge swings in uh, heat output on this. You know, in the beginning of a system, it, Johnny described that we're actually adding heat to the system through the gasifiers. Uh, that happens for about an hour, give or take an hour, depending on moisture content of your feedstock. After that point, then your feedstock is basically warm enough inside these retorts that they start to output heat. And it's at that point that we need to start taking heat from the system and putting it in the tanks. And throughout the day, that may take these huge swings where it starts real steady and low, and then what we call bursting when certain volatiles in the wood are burning and others aren't. Then there's these uh, massive outputs of heat where we need to be basically running as fast as we can, running our pumps as fast as we can to get the heat from here to there. Uh, hence these giant heat exchangers. Uh, there's a lot of water in there, uh, a lot of buffer, more or less, if that makes sense. You know, it takes a lot of energy to heat a mass of water. Um, How many BTUs per hour? 210,000 BTUs per hour um, on average. That's uh, throughout the whole day. About a million and a half BTUs per batch. And uh, remind you, we're running two batches a day, mostly here. So we can take these two 10,000 gallon tanks and we can usually raise them, depending on their temperature in the beginning of the day. You know, anywhere between 20 degrees inside 20,000 gallons of water. Or in the summertime, we're usually running quite a bit hotter, not quite as efficient. We may put 10 degrees in uh, 20,000 gallons of water. Are your pumps all automated to collect the heat when it bursts? Uh, or yeah. do you have to do that manually? Yeah, well, we basically come in in the morning 
and we'll uh, reference them against what the tanks are. And we'll set them about 10 degrees in front of that. So I'm just hearing a lot of pressure and opportunities for things to explode and wondering what the history is with that over, and are they getting, was there a danger zone and now they're getting safer or? Well, you know, in terms of, I can't speak for systems other than ours. Uh, our entire system is, is open to the atmosphere. We don't use any closed loop systems here at all. Uh, these tanks are, are vented and... Uh, yeah, that's a key piece. We're uh, not running a boiler. We're a water heater below boiling temperature. At the point that you start going too high in your temperature, things get crazy. Yeah. So that's important if you're thinking of doing that. You're always going to stay below boiling. Really, really important for everything you do. Yeah, rarely is our system running any hotter than 140 degrees. That seems to be about our, uh, our high point in the summertime when we're producing more heat than we need to use. You know, that's when our tanks start to elevate in temperature. And uh, rarely are we seeing that more than 140. I think we maybe had three days last year where it's around 150. And at that point, we're dumping heat. Uh, we're just trying to trying to send heat somewhere. You know, that is until we have a more useful need for it. Yeah, what was the stack temperature that time that we were we were monitoring? Up there? Yeah. Well, my target up there is around 300 degrees. Right. And we're, and our temperature down here? Down here at about 1,800 degrees. So you think about that, you know, 1,800 degrees, 300. We've taken an awful lot of heat off of this system. And that's... That's really a key part of it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna do this, you wanna co-generate, you wanna be able to capture all that energy because once this thing's going, it's running itself. It doesn't need any excess to do it. And that's a huge energy source. And that's why we talk about what scale, farm scale. This would be a farm that can utilize, how many BTUs was that again? Uh, a million and a half BTUs. A million and a half BTUs per load. Per load. So when we think of farm scale, okay, first thing you gotta think about is, can I use that much? Because I'm going to make that much, you know? In the, in the water tanks, it's actually producing a lot more of that, but through the inefficiencies of the system, that's what we can actually yeah. put in the tanks. It's amazing that. Yeah. You're doing fewer loads in the winter? Not fewer loads in the winter. We, we're heating more aggressively in the wintertime. You know, we're actually, we're heating the kilns aggressively. We're heating the greenhouses aggressively an enormous load over there. Uh, what I mean that we're running hotter in the summertime is that we're, we're, for one, we're not heating the greenhouse. You know, the kilns are already warm from solar, so it's not as uh, efficient heat dump over there. You undersized your heat exchanger, so you couldn't keep up with the 200,000 BTUs an hour during a, a burst. What, what, then what happens to the, what happens to the system? Well, yeah. stack temperatures are higher, yeah. for one. Your condenser starts to run a little bit less efficiently. If you're sending, you know, our system's tied together. Our condenser water, uh, Johnny, I think, touched on this a little bit. Uh, condenser water is the same water as what's going into the heat exchanger. Your condenser is going to work better if it's colder water going into it. Uh, that's how it, how it works. You're going to... So, as we approach that 140 degrees, 150 that I was talking about in the summertime, uh, that's the first thing we notice is that we're not condensing as well. We're uh, fighting a little bit harder to keep a clean stack. Our cleats, our cleats. Yeah, which means we're getting a lot hotter down here. We need higher temperatures in the gas fire to burn hydrocarbons. So, so but since your heat exchanger is well matched, right? Yeah. But when you don't need the heat, it dumps it, and so you guys are here, out here with hot. Not that hot. No. Not that hot. Yeah. <laughs> the earth can take a lot away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's hot enough just standing next to these things and with the sun beating on you from here. I don't even know if we notice. Well, let's go look inside. Two look inside. There's no storage in there. Hey, do you want to show me the greenhouse? Go around to see the greenhouse. So this greenhouse is owned by Living Web Farms. And this is Rocco. He is one of Living Web Farm star employees, and he um, is one of the main managers for everything going on here. This morning looks like you're what? What are you doing? Stringing up cukes? Yes, sir. Um, and then they've already got their maters in. So this is a very efficient greenhouse design with the double insulation 
Um, it's got you know thermostat con thermostatically controlled vents up at the top on the ridges and on the sides to balance airflow and heat. Our side of the system comes in over here by Johnny and Rocco. This is uh, the black insulated lines there on the left are our um, low temperature water that comes over from our stored heat and the water tanks um, from, from the system over there. They come in through there into the manifold on the top are distributed under the surface level at about 18 inches underneath these beds and then is returned through the manifold on the bottom and sent back to our tank um, to be heated again and to return that process. Um, these tables that you see over there to my right um, are also low temperature lines and those are um, what they've been using to start their seeds on or at least uh, keep their seed starts warm and that's once again low temperature water that's circulated underneath those mats and those were um, recycled water heated pool collectors uh, just the, the plastic mats that you see on people's roofs to heat, heat their pool water we use some of those and just circulate our tank water through them on the starting tables um, and we there are spare lines spare high temperature water lines and every one of these boxes you see there's there's three zones one two and three but you get it um, and there's high temperature lines in every one of these manifold boxes for uh, future moating heaters like the heaters that are in the kiln um, so we're gonna instead of trying to heat the ground um, so much next winter we're gonna try to heat the air as well um, with our system in our original plan we figure what we could do is heat this center have plastic walls on the side in the winter and then the heat loss from this is losing it to the other sides. So then you could have your coal crops and Pat Battle, who, who uh, is very involved in the management of this for Living Web Farms, he's, he's a specialist in, in season extension also. So he's like, yeah, if we lose a little heat to the sides, that's just fantastic for what he does. So our energy plan for this next year, that's the next step is, is to get it so we can heat the air in this room with plastic walls. It will lose a little bit of heat to the outside, which will be the other two greenhouses. So that, that kind of ties into this part I was going to get into later, which is the economics and sustainability. We think that if, again, what size farm it is, is a farm that can use that heat for this kind of operation. So people want to see the tanks. Uh, these are our pipes interacting with our uh, heat sources outside. Talking about the heat exchangers and the condenser being heat sources. Uh, water's coming in from anywhere, you know, between tank temperature to you know, 140, 150, um, you know, during a heavy burst, a big burst, we can be pulling in water at 150 degrees or so. Uh, they come in down here, enter this big loop. And then off of this loop, you know, we can direct heat out to loads. These are all kiln heaters. These are the uh, air heaters that Abraham was explaining. Uh, or we can uh, direct off to, this is future heating. This is, um, for the alcohol production we'll be doing here later this summer. Uh, we'll be pulling directly off of here. So what this means is that we're taking our hottest water and we're taking it to the places that need hot water. Um, this uh, variable speed pump over here, uh, that just takes a off, um, that's an intelligently controlled pump, really, that's looking at this water temperature and uh, injecting high temperature water into a, a loop to uh, keep a consistent low, steady low temperature water, low temperature being 120, 110. And that goes to all of our high mass, low temperature loads like this lab in the greenhouse. Uh, this one here. That's right. Yeah, so think of it as the high temperature loop here and the low temperature loop over there. Most of our loads are actually coming off that low temperature loop. There's little green pumps. Uh, those are the two kiln pumps. The one on the far right is the one that dumps heat into the sidewalk outside. Um, these rubber pipes down here are what goes out to the greenhouse. So again, we've got a lot of future expansion. We've got a lot of opportunity just to rearrange this system how we need it to work for us. Um, all of these tanks, these two lines, uh, not tanks, these pumps, these pumps, they just interact with the tanks. You know, we can set it up so that we've got a high temperature tank and a low temperature tank. Uh, we'll probably be doing that here to get better condensing later this summer as well. A lot of projects going on. Uh, intelligent controls over here. This is all um, 
manually programmed at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. Um, we're looking at temperatures outside at each heat exchanger and condenser here. Right now, this tank beside you is 101 degrees. Uh, tank two over there is about 105. Uh, we ran one load last week, and prior to that, it's been about two weeks since we even ran a load at all. And we're still maintaining over 100 degrees in these tanks. Um, so we've got a, a, a pretty good insulated system.